Okay, so the topic for today is are you using ChatGPT in your job search? Most of you have already heard about ChatGPT. You can't go online and not hear about it. You can't open the news without seeing it. So most of you have probably dived in a little bit, but there are some of us, it takes a little bit longer for us to understand exactly what it is and how it can help us. ChatGPT is so broad, for, but for today, our focus is how we can utilize it for what we need in our job search. So let's get started here. All right, where is my OK, so. We're going to be very focused with what we cover today, which is what is ChatGPT? It, how we're we going to look at it as a job search tool. We're going to talk about how it can help us, and then we also have to talk about how we have to learn how to use it, how we have how it's a bot, so we have to figure out how, we have to figure out the right way to ask the right questions in order for it to understand and give us the results we're looking for. OK, so um, moving on to the next slide. OK, so real simply, what is it? It's artificial intelligence that was just introduced November 30th, 2022. So we're looking at something that's only about six months old for the public. And everybody's already using it, so it hit the ground hot out of the gates and everybody has uh, is finding ways how chat GPT artificial intelligence is helping them in whatever space they're in, whatever work they are looking for, whatever research they're looking for. So it's something that you need to understand how to use for yourself in order for it to work for you. And what does it do? Well, it is an artificial intelligence uh, bot that speaks, you can speak to in just regular language. Grammar doesn't even have to be proper and it it spits back the information you're looking for and it took me a while to try to understand what this was because my technology bff has always been google right we've all used google you want to know something you put it in google and google generates these websites where you have to go to those particular websites to get the answers that you are looking for chat gpt is a little bit different it does the scouring of the internet for you and then presents it to you as if it's very knowledgeable. So chat GPT is a new friend to me and chat GPT does not know me. We have to do the stance of getting to know each other. I don't know how much I can trust chat GPT yet. And I don't know how much it knows about me for me to trust it to write my resume or cover letter yet. Um, so some of you are probably saying, yeah, this sounds good. Let's get to it. Is it free and where do I get it? The version that I have been using is the free membership. And there are upgrades, but I haven't really looked into it because I what what the free membership level works fine for what I need it to do. And so where do you get it? This is the URL that ChatGPT is. So what we're going to talk about today is ways how uh, different ways of how we can use it as a tool, how it can benefit our job search, and then the big chunk of this webinar is going to be a demo because I could not figure out a way how to show you, explain it to you without actually having going through it myself with you. So hopefully things will be more clear, more clarified. Can I just ask a real quick question? If you don't mind dropping some comments in the chat box for us. How many of you are already using ChatGPT for work? Or for school? Because this will give me an idea of where we're at because I drafted this presentation for those that are very early in the stages of using ChatGPT. How many of you have used it? Excellent. Excellent, thank you. OK, so how can we use it as a search tool? We can use it to help us identify alternate job titles. I think one of the hardest things for job searching is we know what we do, what we're called. Like, for example, me, I'm a career coach. If I were to do the traditional way of job searching, I would just keep looking for the word career coach. But we all know that depending on the industry and depending on the companies themselves, they use variations. Some institutions may call this career development uh, 
you know, career development or career counseling or or a variation of that. And same thing for you. I'm sure you all know you have colleagues that have similar jobs, different companies that have different titles. So so chat GPT can help us do that as well. Um, research where jobs are found. That's another thing that we have a problem with. Where are these jobs that we can apply for? And what are the industries who hire for this position that we what we want? And then once we find the industries, we have to figure out, well, who are the large companies that are in those industries? And then the last part that I have listed here is we also then go, OK, well, once we find all that up, we got to figure out well, what qualifications are they looking for? And all of this is very time consuming. Our new best friend ChatGPT can help us find all this information in a very short time. So this is a really exciting tool. Now, I have been here over 10 years as a career coach, and I have to say this is the most exciting tool I've ever come across. Um, I've got three people, so excuse me, I'm having to um, let them in. I, I apologize that I have to stop here. Um, this, um, every time I go in to let somebody admit, it turns on the volume for everybody, so it is important that everybody mute themselves so that I don't I don't want to move around too much and lose the actual screen in you all. OK, so bear with yes, us that way. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so. Um, we there's ways that you can use chat GPT to identify your own skills. And then the skills that are on the job posting and then you can match it yourself. Now, the one thing that I have learned and you can you, you can't find a chat GPT article without hearing this is because it scours the Internet. Um, well, one, you can't really trust it. You have to make sure it's accurate. But please do not when you put in your own resume into the chat box, please remove your personal information. The company's OK, the, the job description's OK, but your name, address and all of that stuff, that's that should not be put out there. So just make sure that you're just pasting the work experience part. OK, um, this is a lot that we're plowing through and just because we want to be respectful of your time and it is a lot. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the uh, in the chat box right right now or wherever whenever a question comes to you and Liz will flag me so that we can address it. But we will. I, I'm hoping that we save enough time towards the end to have an open discussion. My webinars are not really uh, formalized or it's not structured. I rather have a conversation with you because my goal as a career coach is to give you what you need, not necessarily what I want to give you. So you tell me what information that you're looking for. OK, all right. So how chat GPT can help you in your job search? Well, we, we just talked about the areas it can help in, but what does that mean to us? How does that benefit us? Well, it can help you understand the job announcement we just talked about by taking the job description. Taking the job description and putting it into the chat box and you will see that how we do that and then asking it to identify the top competencies and the necessary experiences and knowledge necessary for this job. It will extract that for you and tell you rather than you having to spend the next 30 minutes trying to figure that out and taking notes. But where's the thing that what, where it can help you too is if you put in your resume and say, what are the top competencies and achievements found on this resume? And it will tell you. So you can use it to match your uh, match the, the, your skills to a job description. And then we also talked about how you can use it to draft a resume to showcase your skills and experience. So, and, and of course, we're going to talk about how we're going to do a demo on how it creates a cover letter highlighting your qualifications as well as a resume. Now, one thing that I do want to express is that I think as a career coach, uh, you know, uh, perspective on the, the, the documents that ChatGPT spits out, I think they should be used as guides. Guides because. It is still your resume and, and I've always and I've always told students that having a resume made for you, I don't think is the best approach when you're job searching because you have to own the information that's on there. There's nothing more awkward in an interview where you're asked something from your resume because remember when you're in an interview, everything they know about you is on that resume. It's when they ask you something that's not quite you so you don't quite understand what they're asking and you don't know 
what's on that resume. So own your resume. Whatever is on there, it should be accurate and, and reflects your own qualifications. OK, so use cover letter and resume that it generates as your guide. OK, now we have to learn how to ask. Chat GPT for the right information, the, the information that we want. OK, so here's another. This, here's another. These are pitfalls that we're talking about. OK, so here's another warning that I, I found in my couple of months of working on this. When I put in a job description and a resume and I say, hey, write me a resume or a cover letter. The chat bot, or the, 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 the bot writes for the job description. Not me. If I don't have a certain experience, skill or knowledge that's on my resume, chat box or the uh, chat GPT will write a resume saying that I do because it assumes the applicant meets those qualifications. Okay, I think that's worth repeating. AI writes for the job description, not for you, not for your resume. OK, so that's where you have to be careful. So you have to make sure that you include your details to provide the context and the parameters. Just like anything else, when we first learned computers, we had to make sure that we train ourselves to ask the proper way because it knows nothing. The parameters of ChatGPT is the entire Internet. The entire Internet and what we're trying to do is bring scope it down to what we need. So make sure too that you convey your intentions. Exactly what are you asking for? And here's 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 how I first dipped my toe into chat GPT. I read an article where it was about getting using chat GPT for everyday things and it was about dinner ideas. And what it said is if you really this is your first time using chat GPT, go to your pantry, go to your refrigerator, tell it what you have and ask it to give you a recipe for dinner. And I did, and it was like, wow, that's incredible. So the same thing, you have to go to, you have to give it the parameters. You have to tell it what, what resources you have, what knowledge you have, and you have to tell it to give you exactly what I asked, I told, the bot chat GPT, what I had in my refrigerator, what in the pantry, and then I said, give me a recipe. So you have to be very specific and very intentional in what you're asking. OK, and that's how that's one way that you can make sure that the information is accurate. OK, pitfalls. We already talked about this. Lack of personalization, inaccurate, no, no human factor. I know most of you are going, just get to the demo, please. My time is short, so we're going to jump into that. All right, so for those of you who have yet to create a profile for ChatGPT, this is what it looks like. Very simple, nothing overwhelming. So you create your profile by signing up. And I already have one, so I am going to log in. Um, if you have a question right now, please put it in so Liz can flag me while I do this. Um, if you've used it for job search before, share that with us. Let us know how it worked out for you, if it's been helpful, or if you've been using it similarly to how I've been talking about it. A couple of people are saying that it can help you make scripts for how to answer interview questions, um, suggestions of running it through Grammarly just to make sure uh, you know everything is is put together well and to refine the content um and then another guest just said it's a good idea to tell chat what style to write in makes a huge difference in what it puts out so all really good points thank you finally got in thank you liz no um, problem i have an issue there i had my uh my caps on okay all right, so when you get into chat GPT, this is what it looks like. Ignore this. This is some stuff that I played around with. OK, so I have prompts that um, I created and let me find, and that's what I'm just going to put in here. So let's say we are looking for a job and we're going to use it this way. And I'm going to choose a very generic 
position, a title, operations analyst. That can be in any industry. That could be you in agriculture, supply chain, finance, whatever. So, but this is what we're going to use. And we're going to follow this one through to see, to show how it can help us. So I'm going to copy my prompt. I'm going to put it right here. What are other titles for the occupation operations analyst? Simple. Can you all see the screen? I'm going to try to make this bigger. Is that better? Yeah, hopefully. OK, so I asked it, what are other titles for the occupation operations analyst? And it spits it spit out quite a bit. Those could be the titles that I use for my search. When I'm looking online. Um, I have a few more to admit. OK, so depending on your industry, I mean, obviously, if you're in supply chain, financial analyst probably isn't one that you would use. But if you're in insurance, risk analyst, um, systems analyst, if you are in production, manufacturing, production analyst might be one. So this is a great way for you to expand your searches. OK, so let's say we've searched those now. Our next step then is, bear with me here while I go back. Um, now I want to know, well, what kinds of businesses hire for operations analysts? And I'm going to say my industry is supply chain. So I know what I want to do, operations analysts, but I'm in supply chain. So chat GPT, tell me where I find these jobs. What kinds of businesses hire for this position? That's what I want to know. And our new BFF. Oh, where did you go? There you go, it's a little slow. OK, this is my fear, folks. Lunchtime tends to be a very busy time for this website. There were a few days where I could not generate um, responses because of traffic. I am hoping this is not happening now, but if it if it is, Liz and I, Liz created backup slides for us. Let's see here. Um, OK. I'm going to try this again. If not, we will move to the slides. Bro, there are some suggestions that you scroll down on that main screen. Oh, there it is. OK, the button. OK, I didn't see the button. There we go. OK, there we go. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> OK, so here it is. OK, so what kinds of businesses hire for operations analysts in the supply chain? Well, if you're in retail, manufacturing, technology, electronics, consumer goods, logistics, automotive, here it is. You pick out your industry. These are the types of industries that hire. So again, you just narrow down your job search. OK, so now we know what kinds of businesses hire, but we want to know too where we, where we live, right? So let's say I live in the Midwest. OK, actually, let me go back. OK, so I live in the Midwest and I want to know. Who? The large employers are. Who are the largest companies in the Midwest in supply chain? And it gives me the names of the companies that I can target for my for my job search. Anyone ex OK, so um, it sounds like many of you have already ex tried this experience. Is anyone here who is seeing this for the first time? You let us know and what your first impression is because like i was saying um this has got to be the most exciting tool i've come across in my 10 years here because this really just simplifies the entire process for you as a career coach what i'm seeing um this is going to bring to us is that you as the applicant will be able to narrow down your job search you will be able to generate stronger cover letters 
and resumes because the wow to me, I think the wow in this in, in, in the jobs as a job search tool is how it words, how it drafts statements. They're action driven, they're accomplished driven, and the only thing you have to do is make sure that it's accurate. But some of these some of these statements come. I mean, it's it it really is such a strong presentation that if you meet the qualifications, I can't see why you would not get an interview because it's just the way that it it presents you is very strong, but it must be accurate. Any comments for us, uh, Liz, to address? Uh, we have a couple people who mentioned that um, this is their first time or that they've had minimal experience with it. Um, we have someone that mentioned they use chat and Grammarly to create posts in LinkedIn yes. to yes. highlight skills and target potential companies, which is a really great idea. Yes, Grammarly is uh, as AI and I've been using it for for for, for years now and so if you think you have not touched or, or or even touch anything ai grammarly is one and of course the one we all use navigation that's ai as well so we've all been using ai but now because it's such a big tool and there's such a spotlight on it um we start to kind of think that oh chat gpt is so big i don't know how to use it but you've already been using similar ai so um just keep that in mind okay all right, so now um, we've identified the we've identified our um, position. We've identified the region, the companies. So let's let's ask it to draft a a resume for us. So what I have done is I don't have a resume to whoops, sorry. I don't have a an actual resume. What I did instead was I drafted a few statements that uh, mimics a resume to give it context. So let me paste that here. So our fictitious person says, I have 10 years as a logistics supervisor in the US Army. I have two years working for Costco as a warehouse manager at their headquarters and have collaborated with stakeholders at the executive level in the areas of developing strategic sourcing approaches, conducting total cost of ownership analysis, designing cost containment strategies, conducting market research and performing process improvement. I have a bachelor's degree in business management from American Public University. I have a proven record in developing processes and cost savings and efficiency by 18%. So we put that in there. Write me a resume for this job announcement. Then we paste the job announcement. So let me copy that. And paste that here. And let's see what it tells us. I have to tell you, I've done this three times this morning, and each time it has given me different wording. So if you're not happy with the one, the first one, keep trying because it did change things around for me. All right, so this is the resume it has given us. Now, remember we talked about how if it doesn't find it on your resume, it assumes you have, that you possess the qualifications anyway. So having read the, our fictitious resume, see if you can spot where AI made up stuff. OK, all right, so here's their objective. Highly motivated results driven supply chain professional with 10 plus years of logistics and management experience in the US Army and a successful track record as a warehouse manager at Costco's headquarters. Seeking a challenging position as a supply chain manager where I can leverage my expertise in strategic sourcing, cost containment strategies and process improvement to drive efficiency and achieve cost saving goals. Possess strong negotiation skills and demonstrated ability to collaborate with stakeholders at all levels. That's pretty strong, right? Is it accurate? Um, I th I think pretty much here, yes. But can you all see too that there's a pattern where they just kind of repeated? It just it, it tends to repeat things, and. Um, I've, I've spoken with people, I've read online that because so many people have been relying on chat GPT for cover letters and resumes that hiring managers and recruiters are quickly recognizing when a document was generated 
by a bot. So that is where it's, that, that's a, one of the pitfalls we had talked about. You want to make sure that you add yourself into it. And this is why I stress to use this as a guide. You can take some of these strong sentences. These are very strong action driven words, but make sure it's saying the correct, uh, it's representing it correctly. You can change it around. You can add your own from information in it. But this, I think, is where chat GPT is really going to help with your resumes and cover letters. OK, so let's take a look to see what did it tell us? Professional experience as warehouse manager led a team of we didn't tell it how many people uh, employees responsible for supporting direct and indirect purchases across hardware, software and support services developed and implemented strategic sourcing approaches resulting in XYZ cost savings. We said 18 and it didn't put it in there. We didn't really say that it was for Costco either. OK, so we, we have a quick question in here. I'm okay, so sorry. Sure. Um, we have a guest that's asking, can you review that again? Specifically, number one, did you put in the job post? What information did you pull for the resume in order for chat to generate resume? Did you okay. use an old resume? It was not a resume. I just I, I, I instead of pulling a resume, I went ahead and just typed in information. Let me just go back to that. Um, I just typed in experiences. Uh, where are we at here? No. It usually it here it is. I, I just typed this in as somebody who doesn't have a resume handy. I have 10 years experience in logistics supervisor in the US Army. I have two years working for Costco as a warehouse manager at their headquarters and have collaborated with stakeholders at the executive level in the areas of developing strategic sourcing approaches, conducting total cost of ownership analysis, designing cost containment strategies, conducting market research and performing processes in improvement. So somebody at this level is, is, is apparently, you know, looking at a mid mid level or early uh, executive level. So, but what that did, so I, I, I went ahead and pasted that, and then right in the middle, I told it to, um, let's see here, right, write me a resume for this job announcement was my request. In between the resume information and the job description. Was that, did the, was that the question? Did I answer that? I hope so. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. So, um, OK, let's go back. We were we were talking. We were reviewing if it was accurate in the way that it created a resume for us. Mm -hmm. Collaborated with executive level stakeholders to design and implement cost containment strategies. That's pretty strong. That conveys a, uh, a level that you are where you're at as far as working with the decision makers. OK, um, manage complex requests for proposals. RFPs and conducted negotiations with supplier executives to achieve favorable terms and conditions. Now, this is key. This was not in the resume that I put. This was a requirement in the job description, and it put it in there as if it applied to my fictitious person. So this is where I want you to be, be careful of what you put in or what it spits out to you. Because what I should have done if I was doing this is I would have read the job description and if I and, and when I see that request for proposal experience is necessary, I would have put that as part of my resume, my part of information, or I would have said, I, I, um, I, I don't have that information or or something where I would have addressed it. But you, if you if you omit it and you see it, just assume that you know you need to remove it. But do you see now what I'm saying is if it's if you don't address it, it's going to assume that you possess it. And and that's 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 a that's a dangerous thing to to do. So you have to be much more careful about the documents that you submit when it's generated by uh, by AI. Okay, implemented process improvement initiatives that enhance the cradle to grave procurement approach. That's you know that's better than state. You know that th these statements are so much more descriptive and much more um, robust than putting responsible for enhancing procedures. Right. So this is what I'm talking about, how using the AI generate documents as your guide. It's very 
uh, it, it is very action driven, achievement driven, and that's where you could really rely on this to help you with your own documents. Okay. Manage and coordinated logistic operations, including inventory management, transportation distribution. Okay, that, that's, you know, that's fair. Developed and implemented innovative processes that improve cost savings efficiency by 18%. Okay, as a career coach, I would tell you this needs to be at the top. No one cares that, you know, this is more of a wow than manage and coordinated basic operations, everyday task inventory management. Anything that you can quantify as your success needs to be at the top. AI did not rank this. But as a career coach, you that 18% efficiency cost saving is going to capture the interest of a hiring manager or recruiter reading your resume. This is where that human factor is missing. This is where you have to step in and look at your resume and say, is it representing my achievements, my success? up front because you don't want it to be buried in the bottom. OK. Um, and then right here, the skills. Um, it. Took it from both the resume and the job description, so you're going to have to make sure that you have all of this, that this applies to you. Again, we see government contracting and FAR regulations. I didn't mention that in the resume that I had, but it assumed because I said I spent 10 years in the US Army in logistics that I had that experience. So it's not like they're just pulling it out of the air. They are making assumptions based on the information that you've given. OK. Questions, comments so far before we move into the cover letter? We have a couple of suggestions. OK. Um, I got to scroll back up here. Uh, where did you go? So, uh, a guest suggested that they use the word rewrite a lot with new requirements. It saves a lot of time. Okay. And then we also had a suggestion. I would do a bullet point at a time and ask it to make it better in 10 variations. And you can choose the best one, place that in your resume and in, in the format of your choice. Those are both excellent. Excellent. I thought so too. Yeah. <laughs> do you see how... How you can, there's so many ways to use this that you can figure out. I mean, earlier today, I didn't finish it. I, I was asking it to write me a script for this presentation, but it I didn't like what it wrote. So I figured I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to talk to you like I do with my one on ones with my with my with my students and present this to you. But you can ask it to do nearly it's, it's almost endless things that you can apply it to. If you need something, ask it. Because um, when, when I watched a, uh, a YouTube um, uh, video on, on this where a guy was using it to create a Harry Potter theme car wash. And he asked it to give him car washes named after Harry Potter characters. And it did. I mean, things as crazy as that. So absolutely, if you want it to rewrite, you have bullet points and you want it to rewrite, tell it. There's so many things you can do. And thank you for sharing that idea because this is how we learn. There are 32 people in this room. And I would say maybe half of us didn't think about that. So thank you. If you have any additional ideas, please put it in the chat box so Liz can share it with everyone. We just got another one that actually okay. we just got two that popped in. Um, for entrepreneurs, you can tell it you want to start a company and write a business plan and then go down the rabbit hole. I've been toying <laughs> with that while I look for a new job. That's that's a great suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next one says, once having used those AI steps, all great ideas, it may be good to refine the output with something like, and then they gave a, a link for resumes and cover letters from Harvard, uh, from okay. their career services uh, for different structure and verbiage. Uh, we should all be constructively paraphrasing, editing, Seems like the more personalized your editing is, the better. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely, yeah. Because the, then now you're putting your yourself, your personality into it as well. But this, folks, is is a game changer for every industry. Someone who was it that I just saw real quickly? Somebody started agreed with Brian that that was a business plan. Yes, mm -hmm. incredible, 
incredible. Um, you can ask it anything. So for those of you who have not dipped your toe into this, when we get off of this and you have time, go on it. Ask it anything. Like I said, if you are intimidated, start with dinner. Go to your pantry. Uh, Liz and I did a run through this yesterday and we said, OK, let's have, you know, chicken breast, broccoli, uh, tomato sauce and sardines. And it spit out a what was it, Liz? A sardine chicken uh, something casserole of some kind, which yeah. is is very Midwest, <laughs> which I, I thought was hilarious because I live in the Midwest. But um, yeah, it, it's amazing what it spits out in that example, especially of like the most random ingredients that you could think of. And I was trying to think completely off the wall. Um, and I, I don't even like fish and what it spit yeah. out. I was like, hmm, I would eat that. <laughs> it's incredible. So for those of you still not sure how this is going to help you, it can help you with dinner ideas tonight. OK, all right. So um, all right. So let's move on to the cover letter portion. So now that this is a resume that we have, let's see what it spits out to us for um, a cover letter. And it's this. We are going to put the same resume information. The only thing that's going to change is the prompt that we ask it to do. So we're going to copy the resume portion. And again, this was not a resume. I just put this little narrative together real quick for the, our purpose here. And I'm going to say, write me a cover letter for this job posting. And then I am going to copy the same job posting. And ask it to write me one. So I'm so happy that some of you are already advanced in this. And again, this webinar was created just to get those people who have not yet started um, using this tool. All right. Lengthy. All right, OK, let's read what it told us, what it came out with. OK. All right, it says, I am writing to express my keen interest in the supply chain manager position at GDIT as advertised on blank with over a decade of experience in logistics and supply chain management, including 10 years as a logistics supervisor in the US Army and two years as a warehouse manager at Costco's headquarters. I am confident in my ability to drive strategic initiatives optimize processes processes and achieve cost savings for GDIT. That last statement is strong. Right? Something you can use on yours. Throughout my career, I have had the privilege of collaborating with stakeholders at the executive level, devising and implementing strategic sourcing approaches and conducting total cost of ownership analysis. Let's stop here. That was verbatim from the job description. This is where you're going to get caught by recruiters, by hiring managers, where it's written by a bot. So you got to make sure that you change things around. OK. At Costco, I successfully designed and executed cost containment strategies that led to an impressive 18% increase in cost saving and efficiency. My experience in government contracting, including complex agreement negotiations with suppliers, executives, and adherence to federal acquisition regulations makes me a well suited makes me well suited to handle GDIT sourcing and procurement requirements. My bachelor's degree in business management from American Public University has provided me with a strong foundation in leadership, process analysis, and written oral communication skills at all organizational levels. That's a sentence that all of you can use, right? I am adept at managing teams and fostering an environment of professional development, ensuring compliance with policies and procedures while driving continuous process improvement. That's a strong statement as well. Do you see how this comes across really strong, action-driven, achievement-driven? But it needs to be accurate. Okay. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of this because this is just, you know, it, it just generates a, a similar, similar um, comments and and statements. My ability to maintain professional relationship with suppliers, all that. <clears throat> I am more curious to see. We have about 15 minutes left what your thoughts are. I love how you are all sharing your experiences. I love how you are all sharing ideas. And can you can you guys tell me who feels confident or if you haven't tried this before, if this seeing this demo has given you no, new confidence to try it, that it seems really easy. 
we've had a couple of really great um, comments on just general experiences with it. We have one guest who said that they started, they were able to start an Etsy shop with their kids. Um, GPT, wow. they used it for item descriptions and suggestions for new products, but they also said, uh, one thing I've noticed, AI likes to, likes to say things are vital or critical, and that can be a dead mm -hmm. giveaway that AI wrote it, uh, which is why it's, it's always important to go through and like edit with your own eyes, of course. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Any others feeling that they now can have seen how easy and simple this is? We have one guest who says, I'm signing up now and feel very confident to use it. Um, another guest said, using it Excellent. as a guide is the best advice. Style can make a difference in the words it uses. All very great points. Yes, as a guide, because um, <clears throat> it, this is this is very similar to what students have, you know, students have come to me and said, oh, I had this professionally written. Um, and it's so formal. I mean, there's certain formality when you're applying for a job, but there's also it's also important for them to be able to see your personality in it. And these AI generated documents just don't have that. And really, if a uh, uh, playing field being all equal, uh, every all applicants having the same the same um, experiences, level, skill level, uh, accomplishments, competencies. What's going to what's going to make you stand out is your personality. And that's what the interview is that that's what they look for in an interview. We so, have a guest that suggested uh, say in the style of to change the way it writes and then they followed up with you could write a resume and the style of Edgar Allan Poe, which I think is hilarious. I. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that is. Wow, I have never thought about that. So, um, OK, so that is all I have, guys. I hope this has given you a peek of what the possibilities are. And again, as a career coach, I am seeing this as a tool that will help you create your cover letter and resumes that are uh, show improvement from where you're at now. And then when you submit it to us and feel free to submit it to us for feedback, we then rather than reviewing it for for you know for for the little things that could have done uh, easily been done by by chat, we can now look at it through the eyes of if I were a recruiter and I was looking at this, would I call you in for an for an interview rather than giving you feedback as to grammar or what needs to be pointed out or you're missing this competency because Chat GPT has can point that out to you and you can include that. So the way coaches can look at your resume is, are you going to stand out? And I think that will put you closer to the to the next step in getting to getting the job that you are looking for. OK, um, we have a few more minutes. If you have any more comments, ideas or. Any parting words that you are are um, interested in sharing. Um, also, again, this is being recorded, so this will become available. Um, on our Career Services YouTube channel. And if you are not aware of that yet, anytime you get an email from our department from a coach, look at the bottom of our signatures because there's a link to our events calendar. Uh, we have three levels of uh, webinars. This is called Career Readiness. This uh, is more, it's longer, more robust. Um, generally, it's more structured and formal, except for when I do it. And this is such an exciting topic that we just had to wing it and I had to open up the conversation with you all. But career readiness happens quarterly. And then throughout the month, you will see shorter, maybe 30 minute career uh, group coaching that you can sign up for or, or uh, job search skills, like more about the uh, the fundamentals like resumes and job search, things like that. But anytime you need assistance with anything career related or career planning, please reach out to Career Services.